former Jets executive who also is on NFL Serious. Of course, that's Pat Kerwin. Pat, what do you think about the team that first-year GM Mike McKagan is assembling here? Well, he's done a serious job in the veteran personnel. Everybody who's a Jet fan is excited about it, and I'm here watching practice. You should be excited about it. The Revis and guys are back in town. That means they can play man coverage when they want. They can pressure. Todd Bowles is well known for his pressure scheme. He's got the tools now, and I'm sitting here watching and actually standing here watching the defensive line. You can actually have a three-man rush that doesn't have to blitz. That's the beauty of what's going on up front with these guys. Leonard Williams looks fantastic. When someone told me he was 323 pounds, there's no chance I believed it. He looks like he's 280. So you can rush the passer without pressure, but anytime you want pressure, which Todd Bowles loves, you got it. So what do you anticipate him doing? Now he's paired up with KC Rogers. You just mentioned it because they do have the talent on the outside paired up with that, so those big stalwarts up front. Well, we all know what's going to happen here. It cuts down to beating that guy up in New England, Tom Brady. And if you can't take him down, you're not going to beat them. You're not going to win the division. There are enough weapons here on defense to get to Brady. And then you got to get the offense to come through for you. So defensively, I think it's built to affect Tom and what they have up in New England. Do you like the stable of running backs here? We know Chris Ivory obviously is the starter, but there's some depth. I think people always sleep on Bilal Paul. Uh, the Jets also acquired Steven Ridley in the offseason. He's trying to come back from a knee injury. And Zach Stacy was a guy they got, uh, found a lot of value uh, on draft weekend with the seven round pick. Yeah, you know, I was raised to believe you never have enough running backs. So four in camp is good, but four on the final roster is always tough to do. At the end of this, you might have a running back to give, they might have a corner to give, they might have an inside linebacker to give, and they might have a guard to give. So I said to Mike McCagnan, your phone's going to be ringing late in August, and you might have some opportunities to make some moves here with players. Brandon Marshall's acquisition, what is he going to do for this offense? Well, he should set coverage. You know, and he's not the fastest guy in the world, but you still got to get a man and a half to his side, which opens up the run game stuff. And so this is a team where you're probably challenged by that. You go up to New England, they're never playing the run against you. They're always playing Brady in the past. But here, you're trying to hide that coverage because you'd like to play the run on a couple of downs. And if the quarterback's smart enough because of Brandon Marshall and he gets that man-and-a-half look, he can get to the run game. So to me, he's going to support the run game as much as catch 70 to 80 balls. And lastly, uh, just to follow up on that, that was a weakness last year for this team, red zone efficiency, that last in the league. But now you pair up. Marshall with Decker, 6'4", 230 pounds, 6'3", yeah. 215 pounds. You got a guy like Jason Morrow, he's got some good size himself. More targets for Geno down there when the field shrinks, right? Yeah, there are more targets down there, and there's still a threat of the run game down there as well. And I think from watching practice here, Geno's still, uh, and I never thought of him as a runner, but he's been taken off all summer. And now if you, if you tell a defensive opponent, uh, the quarterback runs in the red zone, and you add that dimension, whether it's the quarterback draw or the scramble, uh, now you got some real problems. You should do a lot better than 30 seconds. <laughs>